This is the ITM for a Daikin VRV3 system. And you can see I've got a system and alarm here. I'm gonna go down. These are the indoors and you can see it's only this one here. Go to list and then let's try and drag that. This thing's stubborn. There's my error code AF. And that has to do with uh, condensate issues. Let me show one other thing. So to identify this unit, because you can see, you know, all it says is 512 and there are no room labels in this building. We're gonna go to details and there's a couple things. So we do have that in details, which is nice. Um, and then port two, all that means is that if I want to tap into this system, I need to be on the second module. So this is port two here. And these are set with a rotary switch. Now, the other thing is this address. Um, it really bothers me that they don't give air nets on this because air nets are what you get on service checker. I think for later gen equipment, service checker can pull air nets but uh but anyways so we're going to be looking for that address on the nav remote i always like to look at codes before i start troubleshooting no matter how many times i've dealt with it because one of the worst things that you can do is have tunnel vision as a technician and uh, be narrow-minded when you're going into a problem so i like to look at all the possibilities Here's the definition. Water leakage is detected based on float switch on off operation while the compressor is in non operation. <laughs> Poor English. All right, so <clears throat> the float switch in these units, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and this is pretty typical of all VRF fan coils, when they're in cooling mode, um, <clears throat> The, the drain pump is like a misting sling style. So it's going to be running continuously. And this float switch here is not to activate the pump. The pump runs continuously. The float switch is there um, to let the unit know if there's a problem and that water level has risen further than it should. I think this is the unit we're after here. Now, in order to get into the service menu, you have to wake the stat up so the backlight's on and then hold cancel. And now we're gonna go down to the group address and confirm that we're on the right unit. We are. I apologize for the shakiness, but this is a very hard area work in. Um, so I am probed into X15A, I believe. It's the factory fl float switch, and um, it's basically impossible to back probe, so <clears throat> I've just pierced it, and it is closed. All right, I do have voltage to the pump. They are line voltage pumps, but there's one more thing we need to check. We need to check that the pump is actually using the voltage that it's being supplied with, and it is. They run at about 50 milliamps. It took me forever to find a clamp meter that could read this stuff. This is a, let's see if I can get that in focus. It's X-Tech. A lot of stuff on VRF systems is very low amperage, high voltage. So this meter has been awesome. So the pump is using that power. Now, whether or not it's running, whether it's locked up, we don't know. Let me comment on this 50 milliamps here. You know, when I said it may be running or it may be locked up, typically you think when a motor's locked up, it'll pull excessive amps. And I'm pretty sure that it's not locked up, but when you're dealing with something like a shaded pull motor, locked rotor amps, it can be really hard to tell the difference. I mean, it is just not much. So that's why I want to be careful about just assuming anything. But 
I would expect to see something a bit higher than this if it was locked up. But uh, again, when you're troubleshooting, never make assumptions unless you have done the experiments. <laughs> and I've never locked one up. Here's the drain for the pump. Of course, if you're gonna gravity drain it, you do it out of there. And I'm not really liking this. I need to look and see what the spec is, but I'm not sure that that little pump has that kind of lift. What I might do in the meantime is just drain the water down from there and uh, see how much water we have built up. May try looking down in there and see what's going on. All right, so yep, we've got standing water right up there at the level of the T. So maybe this pump does have enough lift. Let's look at something real quick. What I'm wondering is if this system gets cut off or switches over into heat and that condensate pump shuts off, all that water drains back and activates that switch. And then, you know, if it stays active for long enough, it'll throw the code. And those pumps are very slow. So even if you cut it off for a second and back on, that could cause a code because that pump just can't move that amount of water that fast. So I'm just going to cut it off and I want to see if that water drops back down into the pan. So let's see. Normally it takes it a second. There we go. It's still running with the system off. Uh, might need to be in heat to finally shut that pump down. It's really hard to keep track of what all these different systems do under different circumstances. To simulate the pump going off, I'm just gonna unplug it. It's hard to tell on the camera, but I can see that the water has drained back into the pan. I'm draining it now and I wanna see if this switch goes back on its own. It's normal for some water to come out of these uh, ports no matter what, but uh, sure we have a lot built up. Here's the pump assembly right here, and there's the float. It works in the opposite way that I thought. So with the float down, I have zero volts. With the float up like that, we're seeing our five volts. There's a look at how the pump works, just a little impeller, and when it's not moving any water, it's at 45 milliamps. <clears throat> now, I'm going to see what it does when we jam it up here. There's locked rotor. Alright, good to know think this is just a situation of <sighs> this maybe being too tall causing issues when this pump shuts off I need to look at the spec and see if this is even acceptable but either way it's struggling to get the condensate out doesn't look like the drain is clogged the pump does in fact shut off in the off mode uh, just runs for a while, which makes sense. It's trying to clear the pan, but it's never gonna do that when you've got this much rise. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. 21 inches. Well, that is the problem. I know that these pumps have some lift, but that looked too much to me, and it is. So this is the max lift, so it's beyond that. Um, it appears to be working despite that. Um, what I think happens is when the system gets shut off or, um, you know, it, it cycles over to heat via the schedule, um, that water drains back and, and activates the pump. Here's a better look at the logic, something I had saved in my notes here. So. The thermostat, when it cuts on, the drain pump com uh, comes on, and 
when it's off, then the drain pump will run for five minutes. So that's what we were seeing. The drain pump running with the system off. This float switch, if it activates, the drain will, the drain pump will come on and try and run for at least five minutes before it throws this, uh, this code. Uh, in this case, it says A3, but that A, the AJ code is related and um, I believe can be thrown as well. So I think it's just a bad design coupled with a bad series of events where maybe <clears throat> the thermostat was cycled on and off a couple times and uh, the drain pump you know, in response, just couldn't keep up with that big rush of water coming in. And it ended up uh, creating a situation where it had been trying to run for five minutes with the float still up and uh, through that code. So uh, I'll see if the customer wants to maybe put in an auxiliary drain pump to try to deal with that. But maybe one of those things where if it happens, just just reset it and go on.